a big day. Tell us about this lawsuit. What is it about? Why'd you file it? David, thank you very much. And uh, we have joined with the League of Women Voters and Common Cause as co-plaintiffs, represented by the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights and the Washington, D.C.-based law firm of Arnold and Porter, to challenge the actions of Louis DeJoy, the unprecedented actions to politicize uh, the Postal Service. This is a sad day in American history when the president, reaching down through one of his political appointees, seeks to completely undermine the system of voting. There may be uh, seven states in the United States uh, where the voters in those states primarily rely on vote by mail. Uh, vote by mail is relied on by many rural voters, relied on by many older voters, uh, relied on to people who may be working on election day. And in the environment of COVID, uh, vote by mail becomes a safe option for people who may not feel like they want to go to, to, a, to a polling place, either during the early voting period or on election day. So we challenge uh, Louis uh, DeJoy and we challenge him by saying he's not followed postal service guidelines, rules and regulations, number one. Number two, his actions have a chilling effect on every American's right to vote. And Americans have to stand up. We This smacks of what happens in countries that we're better than, that somehow a person who has power can interfere with the elections process because somehow they feel that they're disadvantaged politically by this elections process. So we're asking the federal courts to intervene. What's happened? Number one, mailboxes have been pulled up. Number two, sorting machines that sort as many as 20 million pieces of mail per minute have been taken out of many postal operation centers. Number three, overtime has been cut back. Uh, employees have been furloughed, pushed out, or laid off. It's clearly an effort right now when many Americans have great anxiety, great concerns about their health, but want to vote in this election, an effort to make it more difficult for Americans to vote. So we want the courts to intervene, but we want the people to speak out. So, so Mark, I take your point, but haven't you already run, won this lawsuit before you even filed it? Because as I say, Mr. DeJoy used to say, okay, fine, we won't make any changes until after the election. Why doesn't that take care of the problem from your point of view? Because damage has already been done. Uh, taking mailboxes out of rural areas and urban communities, that does damage. It's got to be a return to the status quo. Those mailboxes need to be put back exactly where they've been, number one. Those sorting machines need to be put back into place at every postal operation center. The hiring freeze needs to be discontinued uh, uh, so that uh, there are there is sufficient personnel to do what they need to do. Look, postal employees know how to do this work. They do it every single day. They deliver thousands of packages, millions and millions of packages, I should say, and pieces of mail to Americans. They deliver credit cards. They deliver checks. They deliver invoices. They deliver greeting cards. They deliver birthday cards. They deliver valuable medicine. Uh, they deliver things every day. They know how to do this, but the process is being interfered in for political reasons. Okay, so Mark, you said, let's go back to the status quo. Is that going to be good enough? That is to say, do, does the Postal Service have the resources it needs if we really have a huge deluge of mail-in votes? Because a lot of people are predicting it's going to be several times what we've seen in the past. Or does it have to be something the courts can't give you, which is billions of dollars appropriated to help the Postal Service on an emergency basis? I think what the courts can do is order uh, the government and order the Postal Service to ensure that every ballot that is properly placed in either a post uh, a, a post post box or a, uh, a, 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 a or, or brought to the postal station or brought to the the mail the, the mail put in a mailbox I should say or brought to a postal office finds its way safely securely and on a timely basis to its destination which is an elections headquarters or a uh, a uh, a, uh, a, a registration station or wherever the ballots are counted. This is what the courts can order 
the United States government to do and order the Postal Service to do. And the Postal Service can figure it out. Look, right now, Congress is debating a new COVID bill. And that new COVID bill could easily include sufficient funds to allow for mail-in ballots to be delivered on a timely, a safe, and a secure basis and give them more than the money they need. Right. What's more important than American democracy? Mark, just to What's sneak, sneak in here, just to sneak in here just a second, time's a wasting because a lot of these ballots are going to be submitted in the not-too-far-distant future. Have you ex asked for expedited relief? We've asked for uh, uh, summary relief, expedited relief, an injunction uh, against the Postal Service. And so it's our hope that the courts will take this matter up fairly quickly. Yeah, it's fascinating. There's going to be a lot of dispute, a lot of litigation and going I on. And I expect, look, I expect many more lawsuits. I mean, we yeah. have filed one. I expect many states to file. Yeah. I expect many, many local jurisdictions and voters to right. file. This is unprecedented. We are in a health emergency right yeah. now, yeah. And, and, and Americans need to be insured of their right to It's vote. a really important point. A lot of people on both sides of the aisle say this could be the most litigated election in history.